really appreciated hearing the presentations from our witnesses, and I'd like to thank them for being here today. Uh, by way of introduction, the region that I represent uh, comprises about the northwest quarter of British Columbia, um, Skeena Bulkley Valley, and includes uh, CN Rail's main line, which runs through uh, a whole number of communities, including communities like Fraser Lake, Burns Lake, Houston, Smithers, Hazelton, Terrace, and Prince Rupert. Um, there are a lot, a large volume of dangerous goods that are transported along that main line and several projects that would increase the volume of those dangerous goods, which makes the report that we have heard about today uh, such an issue of concern for people in the riding I represent. Uh, the Alta Gas Project, uh, it's a propane terminal in Prince Rupert, currently uh, 60 cars per day servicing that project. Uh, just about to be opened, the Pemina Terminal will bring another 28 cars per day, and the VOPAC project, which is currently in assessment, will result, result in as many as 240 rail cars per day. Many of the communities along CN's main line are protected by volunteer fire departments, and their mayors have expressed deep concerns over the years about the transport of dangerous goods and their ability to respond to emergencies. I'm reading it from this report, and, and just to read a couple of the most the, the passages that stood out to me um, from Mr. Hayes' presentation, we found that the department still had not followed up to ensure that companies addressed the violations identified through inspections. For example, the department had not verified that companies took corrective action on 30% of the violations we looked at. And further, um, in other words, and I quote, at the time of our audit, Transport Canada did not have a clear picture of the community of companies it regulated or of the compliance status. So this is of grave concern to people in our region. And my question is to Mr. Keenan. Um, you mentioned that you plan to address these shortcomings over the next two years. And I'm just wondering uh, what you would say to the mayors, to the volunteer fire departments and their fire chiefs, and most importantly, to the residents who live along that rail line in Northwest BC. Should they have to wait two years to have these shortcomings addressed? Uh, thank you for the question, and it's a very good question. Uh, as the, the member, uh, Madam Chair, as the members indicated, that that is a, that is a busy rail line uh, uh, there along those communities. Uh, the answer is no; they shouldn't have to wait for two years. And uh, the two years indicated when we think we'll be done fully implementing all five recommendations. The one that you ra that the member raised with respect to the fact that. We are following up uh, on compliance on the majority of our findings of violations uh, and, and issues, but not all. We're moving now, and uh, we had uh, the CSD noticed, uh, noted a 30% um, rate of not following up. We're, we've brought that we've brought that down since the CSD found out. We believe we're now we're almost at zero. And uh, we're in the process of putting in place a, 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 a tool for inspectors uh, uh, in early 2021 that will require it goes to zero because they won't be able to close a file until they've verified um, uh, 100% follow-up on uh, compliance. Thank you, Mr. Keenan. So if, if I follow correctly, um, since 2011, these shortcomings have been identified and it's taken until now to get to that point where um, some of them have been addressed, but not yet all of them. I'm just wondering why, why it took so long when communities have been speaking out about rail safety and the risk of dangerous goods for all these years. And, uh, and yet we have this very recent report that shows some major shortcomings in 30% of the violations. Well, I, I think uh, another, thank you for the question. Uh, with respect to, to, to that point, if you go back to the 2011 audit of the, co the Commission of Environment and Sustainable Development, uh, there was a number of major issues, for all of which Transport Canada has moved on, and we've made dramatic improvements in the program of the transportation of dangerous goods since that time. For example, back then, we didn't actually have an inspection plan. We only had 30 inspectors. We built a risk-based inspection plan. We're targeting the, the inspections on where there's risk, and uh, uh, we're we're executing uh, over uh, five. Uh, we're executing almost with more than uh, tripled the number of inspections. So we've made dramatic improvements uh, year after year since the audit. There are some areas uh, that where we uh, uh, have more work to do, and so we've got the inspections up. We've got an inspection plan. 
Uh, we have we don't have 100% follow up on inspections, and we're taking action now to get us to that 100% follow up uh, on inspections. Thank you, Mr. Keenan. Over the years, uh, as the mayor of Smithers, I met several times, uh, both with CN and with representatives of the federal government. They always assured us that the response plans in the case of a major industrial fire along the rail line, that those response plans were, were bulletproof. They were, these were excellent plans that were going to protect communities. And yet in this report, we find that the department had not given final approval to many emergency response assistance plans. Why is that? Why did those plans uh, languish in draft form for so many years? Uh, I, thank you for um, the just a very short answer, Mr. Keenan. Uh, sure, uh, I'll, I'll be brief, Madam Chair. Uh, so uh, the, the the report correctly notes that um, that we have had to renew interim plans. Um, uh, two reasons: one is uh, we a number of them were outstanding in terms of having a final. Uh, uh, definition of the standard for our firefighting of flammable liquids and and we've now we're now bringing that to close and uh, they were a number of them required physical inspections so we had a large backlog of uh, of uh, inter of uh, interim plans that hadn't been finalized we're working that backlog down and we are on our way to get it to zero thank you very much mr thank you Madam Chair. We will